Hello, my name is uh, Pratik Mukhopadhyay. I'm an entrepreneur and an author. I'll be hosting the Reimagine Sales Systems podcast where I'll be bringing some of the industry thought leaders who will be sharing their go-to-market strategies for their business systems. Welcome everyone. Today I have uh, not only a one of our clients but a good friend Jason with me and he's going to talk a little bit about not only his journey but also share some of his experience and hopefully we'll learn a lot from today's uh, podcast with Deep Jason. Take. Uh, so with that uh, thank you jason so with that i let jason introduce himself and also uh, we can ask him some questions oh, thanks for taking really appreciate it uh, thanks for i'll take a little time with you today um my name is jason in corvaya i currently work in operations i run operations at a internet company um and uh just have been blessed enough to work with standav certainly for the last uh year or so on, on, on multiple projects and i uh, just wanted to spend a few few minutes here just to chat with you and see if there's any um insights that we can help other folks uh, take advantage of. Thank you, Jason. Uh, so we we have a lot of others, yes, uh, but this is really interesting that you have joined us because you have seen uh, in the enterprise world, you have also seen uh, companies that are startups that want to be enterprise. So can you talk a little bit about your journey uh, in your career? Like how did you come to become uh, what you're doing today and what led to Uh, your current role yeah it's kind of funny i was telling uh, somebody the other day we were meeting some right. new folks that um and we all talked about our journeys right and for the most part most people sure, sure. have been in this business for 25 30 years and so i started off a little bit differently i started off in retail and uh and very quickly got into management i was a very fairly young man and, and still going to school and so a little bit different different path that i took uh and then uh landed after some time at sun microsystems back in my early days and so and since then have, have remained in the enterprise world but it's been um but i have to say it's it's definitely an interesting place uh and i think it's just an ever changing very fast evolving you know place right i mean we always talk about digital transformation and certainly we've talked about that for some time but it's just one of those things that it's one of those industries where you have to really stay ahead of the game right uh and that's mm -hmm. i think the most interesting part about it or when i came back from from retail yeah that doesn't change too too often right it is what it is you can certainly take advantage of some of the new things new technologies but at the end of the day it's it's still a barter you know sell and buy kind of concept and in, in in our world the way you do it and the way you uh, go about conducting your business varies mm -hmm. and it changes literally daily right so it's an interesting um place to be right thank you this is a very very insightful uh, uh so just to hone in to your point about uh, how companies have to be nimble uh, and focus on uh, strategy uh, in your what's your company's current go to market strategy and uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, how do you essentially uh, reach to your customers Yeah, we we um, are actually a classic two-tier model, two-tier channel model, right? So we uh, have distributors, we have partners, um, and that are uh, value-added resellers. We also have partners that are called uh, managed service providers. So these mm -hmm. these channel basically help us really reach our end-user customers, right? Uh, and you know. The, the, you will talk to different people who have different philosophies, right? Some companies want to go straight direct to their customer, and there certainly are benefits to that. Uh, some companies want to do what we do. Uh, some companies want to have one tier, where it's just a D-bar kind of concept, or uh, so you have bars that are simply your, um, you know, very strategic in nature, and they're delivering your services and products. Um, there isn't really any particular one good answer. It just depends on what you're trying to accomplish and what point you are in your business. So, for an example, when we stood up this company. we acquired a product from another company and we needed to and we had half a company we effectively took over some r&d took over some support people but we had no operations we had no sales organization we had no operations we had no systems right so in order for us to make sure that this product that had a good following in the marketplace continued to have such a following we needed to have a, a channel to go sell through because we didn't have our own sales organization yet to start. And so we took we essentially migrated that channel over. We were lucky enough that most of those partners came and adopted our new company if you will, new brand and continue to sell this great VPN product that we had acquired. Um having said that, you know, now that we're 6 years in, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to stay in that model, right? So there's certainly conversations around, well, you know, do you take things more direct and and if so maybe you can slice and dice your your business it doesn't have to be everything done that way, right? So I think as as people think about how do I go to market, think about where 
where you are in your life cycle as a company. Think about what it is that you're delivering. Think about your own sales force. How much reach do they have? How much reach do you need? Think about how do you want to transact it? Do you have the ability to transact in multiple currencies or do you need distribution to take care of that for you? So there's just different ways of looking at this. How much credit risk do you want to take as a company, right? Um, whereas distributors generally pay you on time and so on and so forth. So um, these are all things to think about. There isn't any one good or bad answer. It's just a matter of, you know, where are you? What do you want to get accomplished? And what are the risks that you're willing to take? And you know, what are the benefits that you get? That, that's great. I think those are all great, great points. Obviously, a two-year distribution model and the go-to-market strategy is complex. So in order to monetize, right? people deploy different systems. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not talking about the different brands out there, like the Salesforce or the Actress right. or the Zora, but more from a framework like Stack look like, like what you guys have in place to essentially enable this sort of uh, complex go-to-market strategy. Sure. Well, I think, so first and foremost, it's funny because we have even internal conversations as to what really enables your channel and your right. sales to sell, right? Well, first and foremost, right. you got to have a product that's good, right? Products and services that people want to buy, right? If it's easy enough to sell, meaning because people are clamoring for it and your partners can make money on it, that will take care of a large part of the problem, right? But to your point, you then what? Well, we got to have a place where people, partners can find our price books, where they can get enabled with the, uh, you know, brochures and information and marketing materials and co-branded materials and things like that. So we got to have a partner relationship system or some sort of part PRM system where partners can come, right? Get that information quickly uh, and be able to sell it through, uh, enable them through training and courses and materials like that. Then of course, you got to have a way for them to transact. You know, so make it easy for them to come and get quotes or you quote themselves in a self-service model. So coming back to the CPQ kind of concept, right? Um, then of course, um, you know, and making sure that the pricing engines that are within that system allow for that flexibility, for example, with volume discounts and those types of things, right? Um, you know, uh, easy, easy to contract. So in today's world, especially, we operate mostly with just purchase orders. But as we move more to a SaaS world, you, we have the concept of trial agreements for software as a service or subscription services agreements. Well, we got to make sure our partners can easily mm -hmm. are enabled to get those contracts executed through the channel as well. Um, so these are all things that we have to think about from, you know, beginning to end, just like an idea to offering all the way through the sell through and the renewal motion and our part, not only enabling our own field, but how do we create that extension to the channel as well? Because they, at the end of the day, that's what they do. They're an extension of our field, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, th th that's really interesting. Uh, in terms of, uh, your, uh, challenges right uh, anything you feel you could uh, go back and change in time or um, any feedback you would have for other uh, experts like you who are trying to implement similar solutions to their distribution models enabling the channel uh, that they can think when they are planning their strategy um, you know, I, if I had to go back and do things all over again, would I change anything? <laughs> I would say uh, probably I would change very little. I think maybe the way I approached uh, some of the things that I did would be, or that we did as a team, would be different. Uh, one of the things we did learn, and, and of course, not everybody's going to be in the same, have the same challenges, but when you uh, mm -hmm. divest something from a large company and you end up with it as an asset, you get a lot of customer information, a lot of data about partners, about customers that isn't necessarily the cleanest right and as you start to integrate and buy other products and fold them in and other company assets and fold them in one of the things that we struggle with and i would definitely encourage everybody to do is you know get a good solid base of, of data you know as best you can right and it won't always be perfect data is always you know everybody knows this the moment you put some data element in you know literally within a minute it's it's old right or can be right people move people change out email addresses they change address things like that um i i think that is one thing I, I would certainly focus more on um, when, and when starting up a company of this nature and taking in information from others. Uh, another thing I think I would do is really stand my ground on the kind of systems that we use. And again, not to get into brands, but you know, um, you really try to focus on some of the best in class CRMs if you can, and, and some of the best in class ERPs and really try to get those things done integrated uh, as well as possible and we're, we're avoidable. One of the things we also did a lot of customization. 
Um, and so I think one of the things I would recommend to people is definitely try to use what you can out of box uh, experience. And I know that not everything can be run that way. You always need to have some some customization. But um, you know, if I could minimize that and go back, I'd, that's another thing I would change. I'd minimize the number of customizations we've done in our systems. And and we we are evolving in that. We are actually changing a lot of that in what we do today. Even only six years into our company, we're already starting to go back and just kind of redo things. Um, and, and again, you know, we happen to be in a situation where in some cases we had we had to because we were in a hurry due to the, to the transition from that from the one company we bought these assets from we kind of almost had to fit a square peg in a round hole so we did some things that we mm -hmm. had to do to get up and running quickly and now we're just evolving and maturing those as we, as we go forward both from a business process as a systems process as well very interesting in terms of priorities uh, for 2021 uh, as we look at uh, COVID, supply chain constraints. Are you guys changing something? Do you have any uh, suggestions of what other companies of similar size and scale as they look at 2021? Well, I mean, um, look, everybody knows the, the new normal, right? Everybody talks about sort of these, these new words, these buzzwords. Um, uh, you know, I we are of the belief, and I'm sure most of the world is thinking the same thing, that um, you know, work from home or work remotely and, and doing secure access or remote access from different locations into companies' assets, if you will, you know, productivity tools and whatnot is just going to be with us for a long time. Now, you know, whether or not we return to work at 100 percent or whether we return to work at 50 percent in the office, that's yet to be determined. Right. And it's going to be very and we've seen some big companies take a big step toward, you know, not coming back to the offices, so to speak. Um, for us, what does that mean? Well, we have been classically a on-premise hardware kind of um, company. Now we are pushing more toward more virtualization, right? More uh, SaaS or, you know, as, as a service, software as a service. Um, why? It could be because it gives a lot of flexibility too, right? Imagine you know, when we got hit with COVID, boy, we had a, we did it, we got through it. We had to send a lot of machines to a lot of people, a lot of appliances. Well, the world would be a lot easier to accommodate those customers if they just could download some virtual images and virtual appliances and get up and running, right? With what they needed from us. Um, we did both, you know, we were successful in doing both. So as we go forward, that's really how, you know, we're modeling more towards SaaS, more subscription-based services, more virtualized-based services, uh, and products such that, um, you know, we can you know, not only is eliminate some of the, the things that go into supply chain and manufacturing, all the things you mentioned, but also uh, it, it is, allows us to serve our, service our customers faster, more efficiently, more effectively, right? So really that's our biggest priority going forward next year. That's very interesting. Uh, this has been a great conversation, uh, Jason. Um, I would like to kind of change a little bit uh, of the tempo and talk about uh, your uh, professional story. Like, like we have a lot of uh, listeners who join us uh, who are in their, I would say early or mid career. So, so what recommendations do you have? Uh, like how do you see the head of sales ops or rev ops evolve and what should they be doing as they also want to become the next Jason in the next 10, 15 years? Uh, you know, it's a, a great question. I certainly hope they aspire to be much more. But uh, <laughs> but I think, look, uh, you know, the biggest challenge I, uh, we have often at, at companies, um, including ourselves, is really getting down to um, the analytics, right? So there's a lot of data floating around, a lot of information. But to really analyze and make decisions, right? What we call business uh, decision support, you know, type of analysis, is critical, right? Uh, you you want to be able to very quickly see where you are, not just today, but what is your pipeline? What are you going forward based on your conversion rates and your current pipeline? Do you have enough? Do you need more? And and try to, you know, react as quickly as possible to that analysis, right? Because the, it's telling you information that if you're not really paying close attention and you don't react fast enough, uh, you could find yourself in some challenging times. And so that's really the crux of this is to really leverage the tools, leverage the systems, um, but not just for producing pretty reports, you know, or producing a bunch of spreadsheets, right? It's really done to get that next level, analyze it, really understand what's happening with your business uh, and, and, and understand that if you have to make 
changes, you, you may want to make them very quickly because if you wait too long, it'll just pass you by, right? Um, so that's really what I've come to learn, especially in the revenue operations piece of this, uh, in addition to my other roles, that's really been an interesting ride for me here at, uh, at this company today. That's, that's really nice. Um, so with that, uh, I wanted to conclude this uh, part of our conversation. It was really nice to have uh, Jason join us, share his insights, share his journey. And also he's gave us lots of insights on how uh, similar companies are going to market. So with that, I would like to wrap up this podcast. Thank you all for tuning into Reimagine Enterprise Sales Systems. To listen to more exciting podcasts, please visit my website, pratikm.com or protikm.com, where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and other channels that you follow so that you'll never miss your show.